Ryan Finch, freshman forward Phenom from Raleigh, North Carolina. It was a long hockey journey for Finch to make it to playing at the collegiate level, and it would eventually lead him to Lynchburg, Virginia, the Hill City, to play club hockey at Liberty University. As to be expected, the hockey for Finch didn't skip a beat. He was as good as advertised in his first season at LU. However, the truly unexpected would take place in the life of Ryan Finch through Liberty University in a way he never could have expected. Growing up in Raleigh, two things were certainly true for Ryan Finch. Family was everything. And the Carolina youth Blue hockey scene once again, could Liberty's not so keep up with a young Cycling Ryan Finch. Through. Finch makes one miss. Finch wow. five hole! Talk about some moves. Said it multiple times. LU keeping it in, and this is why Finch is so highly regarded. Undresses Boris, and boom, beats Barnacle five hole. When my dad was in the military, he had a best friend that sadly passed away, and they had a goal that, or like a deal that whoever, whenever they had kids, they were gonna play hockey. So when I was very young, like I started playing hockey when I was three years old, and then me and my brother played together growing up, and I kind of, Went to a stick and puck one day and fell in love with it and didn't play really any other sports. I've really like gifted since I was younger, so people told me. And so obviously like when you get older it's kind of just more like getting stronger, getting faster, just like playing the game of like moving on up in the world. Coming from that and just training every day kind of like made me realize like, oh like if I stick with this I could actually be pretty good. Hockey was everything for Ryan. Countless weekends spent in rinks across the country. And his parents, they were willing to be his personal chauffeur wherever the next game might take him. When you see him on the ice, you kind of look at him as a coach, not really as a dad. He didn't teach you like your son. He treated me like any other kid all the time. So it was nice to learn from that aspect, especially moving on the world. But we would go up to up north every weekend. And then even after that, like I moved straight on from U16 to junior hockey. So I was playing juniors when I was 16 with my brother, of course. Mm -hmm. And then... That was in North Carolina, but every weekend we had to go to PA, we had to go to New Hampshire. There was one constant for Ryan through the, all the long car rides, and it was his brother. His brother stuck by him through thick and thin. Talked so much on the phone, yeah. and just talked about like hockey like brings us closer together. It's like we grew up playing together for the whole time of our lives, and then finally when we like moved away, when he aged out juniors and I went to Kenai, it's kind of like I looked at him like a mentor still because I was always on his team, on his line, so like when I had a bad game, he would help me. I called him a lot in Kenai and like told him like I'm just frustrated with my game, and it just made us so close today, like now. The road to collegiate hockey for college hockey hopefuls is not as streamlined and straightforward as others. In baseball or basketball, you play high school, some travel, play in the off season and through the summer, and the groundwork should be set up for you to play at the next level. Not the case in hockey, and Ryan Finch is well aware of this. He also would take a couple stops after high school before committing to playing college hockey at any particular university. Decision time did come. Ryan had a lot of choices as to what sweater he would want to wear for the next four seasons. Liberty men's D1 hockey coach Kirk Handy would stand out amongst the crowd and influence Ryan's decision to play at LU heavily. Kirk and Brett were the ones talking to me a lot in Kenai when a lot of the other NCAA coaches I talked to kind of were more about hockey and not like mm. post life. It's like you can't play hockey forever. Right. So I was looking more like long term, like coming to Liberty and not only growing my faith with the Lord, but also growing a, a like a relationship with the coaches. And when I first just came here and visited, like I fell in love with the, like the campus. And then when I met Kirk in real life, it was just like, you could tell that he cared about you as a person and not just a hockey player. So the decision was final. He would be headed to Lynchburg, close to home, great facilities, a good school, only one problem. He would be playing club hockey, not the NCAA collegiate level hockey he had always dreamed of. How loud they were in this rink, like it was awesome. And like every game, you just show up knowing that you have like a fan base putting it on, and like 
You walk around campus sometimes and people like say good game. No surprise, the theme would continue for Ryan. In his first season as just a freshman, he would be phenomenal. Finishing with 20 points on the season, nine goals and 11 assists. There would be plenty of ups and downs for the Flames throughout the early goings of the season, as there is for any team. But one of the highlights of not just the season for Ryan, but for his life, would be coming soon. Being able to play power play right off the bat and just playing first line minutes with Bolts was awesome. And then obviously midway through the year, you get the freshman treatment where you don't play as much. And <laughs> old guys get to like, come back healthy. Yeah. But like, I had a blast my first year, and I can't wait for next year to be able to play like an older guy role, you can say. For winter break, Kirk Handy always sets aside a mission strip for his men's D1 team to set out on. It has been a tradition for years now under the advisory of Coach Handy. This would be no different. And the 2023-2024 installment of the Liberty Flames would be headed to Finland for a mission strip in the dead of winter. Ryan, along with the rest of his teammates, would be along for the ride without knowing exactly what to expect. When we first, when I first heard Kirk say we were going to Finland, I was honestly pretty scared. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I've never been out of the country, like yeah. pretty nervous. At this, at this point, I wasn't that like religious yet. I was still learning. Mm -hmm. And so going there, I was like going there as a kid in Finland to learn. So mm -hmm. like, that's one thing Kirk told me was like, just go there and listen and like, just put your mind to the Lord and let him like talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there and we went to church every single night there and just like hung out with the kids. We hung out with U16, Hamelina kids, U18, HBK kids. And then as those nights went on, we were kind of just more preaching to them, but like people would go up there, like Jackson versus Alono, Bartel would go up there and say their testimony. And I just kind of sit back there and listen the whole time. Cause like, I didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And then one night I just was just listening. And I was roommates with Chris Bladen which is also one of our spiritual leaders. Mm -hmm. So every night he would come in the room and talk to me and be like, do you have any questions about the Lord or like what's going on? And I just told him like a couple of things I was a little skeptical on and just had needed questions or answers about. Yeah. And I finally just asked him it and then I gave me some answers. And then that night I was sitting there in my bed probably two in the morning in Finland mm -hmm. because like I was still texting my family back at home. Right. Like, time change. Yeah. And I'm sitting there just staring at the ceiling and I'm like, I just need a sign that like you're real and I'll follow you. It was clear the Lord was moving and working throughout this trip, both on the lives the flames were touching as well as the players themselves. But what needs to happen? It felt like this was all building to something. Something was brewing and the team could feel it. What it was, no one was quite sure, but Ryan would be the one to set it in motion. We get to church and I just feel like this like, Something was on my mind, like I just needed to talk to someone, but I was scared to. Mm -hmm. And so we're sitting there singing, and then finally the pastor there, Dave Pike, was like, if you are looking to get closer with God, I want to give your life to Christ, like just follow this like prayer. And so I just sat there and like closed my eyes, but I didn't follow it yet because I was still just learning right. and like listening. And so after it ends, I'm just like grabbing food, and Bladen comes up to me, and he goes, something tells me that I need to come up to you and talk to you. And he's like, something's just on my mind and says, I need to talk to you and that you want to give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's not God telling him I want to, like yeah. sending him to me. And so I'm like, yeah, I just want to like, I want to give my life to Christ. Like I'm ready and like, I want to follow him and him 100%. And so we finally go downstairs and we pray together. And then it was the best feeling in the world. We do because Jesus is your Lord and Savior. I do. Then on the confession of your faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just like that, Ryan was a new man, and he felt like it too. The rest of the trip was just a blur, and Ryan couldn't wait to get home and tell all of his family and friends about the new changes he made in his life. Just like trying to spread it towards my best friends back at home because mm. like they're not religious. So like I've been trying to help them and bring them to church. Like last weekend, my girlfriend and I, and she's religious, but most of my friends aren't. So we got mm -hmm. all of us to go to church, which it's is awesome. pretty neat. And like 
some of them come up and talk to me after and like ask me questions. It's just God work. Yeah. The decision Ryan made clearly was not only a momentary decision. It has changed Ryan's relationships, his behaviors, his schedules, and prepared him to be a leader both on the ice, in the locker room, and amongst his family and friends. How cool is that? I'm super pumped next year, especially with like, I know two of the three recruits right now coming in, so being able to lead them by spiritually on one level and lead on the ice by another example, like I think they will look at me more than a random person I'm just now meeting. Because mm -hmm. like, when I first came in, I looked at Fulci more than I looked at Bartel because I didn't really know Bartel yet. Mm -hmm. So I followed Fulci's footsteps and I want to kind of lead in that with them, like recruits coming in and show them like, this is our standard here and this is what we do. And then also off the ice, like try to help them become better people. Ryan's story is a powerful one. It shows how sports can be a gateway to something far more powerful. And clearly, Kirk Candy is aware of that. Almost every single season, a member of his team either rededicates or gives their life to Christ on one of his yearly mission trips. And that is truly what it is all about at Liberty University. National championships and winning records are fun and important in their own right, but can't even come close to comparing to the feeling of being close to God for the first time. Just ask freshman Flames female, Ryan Finch.